Welcome to Vancouver Business Network. Tonight's speaker is Dr. Renee Jacobs. Renee has a passion for helping entrepreneurs connect deeply with their high stakes presentations. Renee has been a captain in the United States Air Force, grew and sold an eye care business, earned a master's degree in education, and then pivoted into business consulting and teaching. Renee is now the Director of Speaker Training for Get Inspired Talks, where she designs and delivers courses that help entrepreneurs and other change makers to inspire and activate their audiences. Attendees, if you have any questions, would you please type them into the chat? And at various times over the course of Renee's presentation, I will interrupt her and pose your questions. Renee, take it away. Yay, so tonight's going to be very interactive. I have been doing webinars now for a few weeks and I was very focused on stories for business people because I have an upcoming class, Business Storytelling Masterclass, and I thought business people wanted to talk about business stories. But what I discovered in conversations with people after my meetups is that business people are very concerned about personal stories because business doesn't always happen at the meeting. It happens at the breaks and it happens at the social hour after the business meeting. And a lot of entrepreneurs with really great knowledge and information are kind of introvert sort of people and they don't always feel confident that they can just step into what feels like an impromptu situation and be thoroughly fascinating and engaging and and feel like they can connect at a heart to heart level and that, that was interesting to me because in the business storytelling masterclass that I have upcoming, it starts next week, uh, Monday, there are two directions. We have the personal stories that we create, and we also have the business stories that we create. Roger, I'm getting background noise. Can I don't know if you can put everyone on mute, but they can unmute themselves. That'd be super helpful. So anyway, in Business Story Masterclass, we have two, two directions that we go and in focused on the business direction. And I realized that what people are feeling more interested in is their personal stories. And so tonight I come armed with three personal stories and a guest speaker. And tonight will be different than the previous nights because tonight will be interactive. Uh, you're gonna be in breakout groups. You're gonna be working as editors. You're gonna be talking. It'll be more interactive than what we did before. So I'm excited about that. Today, I actually had a conversation with a beautiful young woman in Toronto and she said, she's trying to post on social media. She's very worried about the state of the world she wants to express solidarity to women of color and she's afraid of being too dark and she feels like she needs to be her own brand. And we talked at length about the power of personal story. And if you're good at personal story and do it right, you can be your own brand and you can be understood. And so that's what tonight is about. I'll give you some practice as an editor and here's what to pay attention to because I'll t I actually have three stories of my own from just the past two days. And this is what you'll evaluate. First, when you tell a story, you wanna go right to the turning point as you craft your own personal stories. What did you want? What was the desire? What emotions were around that that led to a decision and an action? Okay, I'll tell a story, then we'll put you into breakout rooms, three to four people to a room. Roger's going to organize that for us. One question to discuss is what was the turning point? Emotion with a desire that leads to a decision and an action. 
Renee, second, question? Uh, yeah. What, yeah. Is a, what is a turning point? It, it's a turning point is when you, the, the speaker or the storyteller, reaches a time when they have something they want and there's emotion tied to it and it leads to a decision and an action. That's a turning point. And we'll, I'll tell this story and then we'll go into breakout rooms and then we'll come back and talk about it. Any other questions about that? Did that make sense? No other questions? No, it did not because my question is, so what you are saying is in the midst of storytelling, the storyteller is deciding to take some action. So what was the reason for him taking an action? Is that what your question is? Yes. So you're going to hear my story and what you're listening for is what was the turning point in the story. And the second thing that you listen for is the W's. When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who were the characters? And the third thing you listen for of the three things, what were the emotions? What did the characters want? How were they feeling? So those are the things you want to key into as I tell the story. And the other thing to share is at the end of the meeting, if you ha I have a worksheet for you if this is something that you want to practice and use for crafting your own stories. So here's my story number one. I call it, I call it my blue man story. And I told you these are just personal stories, things that happened to me in the past couple of days. Yesterday, I had a client that I was going to meet at nine o'clock. And in this new digital age, I just wonder if you feel like your brain's getting rewired, because I feel like this is happening to me. I just, I just wonder if it's happening to you. So at nine o'clock, I'm on the Zoom meeting, I'm ready to meet, and my client, he shows up right on time. But here's the thing. He's been working with his virtual background. He's trying to get all set up for some business things that he's doing. And he, want, he wanted to be on time. He's got a blue background and he's wearing a blue shirt and his whole head like went blue, like the hair that was the color of the background. I don't know what he had, but it all went kind of blue. And what I can see of him is eyes and a little bit of chin and a smile. And I thought to myself, this is what's going on in the digital age. It used to be if I met someone and they had a virtual background and an ear was missing, I would just stop everything because I couldn't concentrate. But now if someone shows up and they're working on stuff and they're trying, I've become so patient that I can see eyes and a smile and I'm like, we're good. It's going to be a good meeting. I say, I call that my blue man story. Now, here's my question. You heard a story. Did you hear a decision, a decision that leads to an action and some desires? And who were the characters? When did it happen? Where did it happen? And when you think of the characters, what did each of them want and what are the emotions involved? And that's just a little example of a personal story. And Roger, if you'll help me, let's put people into breakout groups in, in groups of, let's do groups of three for 90 seconds. Just talk about those things and then come on back and tell me what you what you found. So that's 10 groups. For 90 seconds and then come on back. Two to three participants per group. Okay, we've just created rooms. What's, okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and open the mic and start taking conversation about what was, 
what did you think was the turning point? And we'll have a few people kind of chime in. Well, I will, if I may. Uh, um, uh, Ned and I sort of agreed that the turning point was uh, when you had the acceptance of the situation as it was, and we're willing to uh, continue on uh, with the Zoom meeting. Yes, yes. And so what were the options? And I'll open it up to someone else. What were my options in the time? Your options were either to accept it and continue with the meeting or just feel uncomfortable and make some excuse and discontinue the meeting. Yes, exactly. What are my but, other options? Go ahead, but you, David. But you, accept, you accepted the fact that this is purely because of digital age. So your acceptance made you accept the conversation going on. Thank you. Yes, David, you were gonna add something. Uh, yes, you could have uh, mentioned it to the other participant and you know made a suggestion for him to maybe fix it, like put on another shirt or something like that. I mean, <laughs> I'd like you option. to change your shirt. <laughs> That's right, you could. And I could, I could say, hey, your background. But it, actually, as what I didn't add to the story is that when he came on board, he's working with the whiteboard. He's trying to get things set up because he's got podcast plans. And pretty much he just didn't want to be late. Like he just knew who I am and that, that I would roll with it. And to me, that's, that's pretty funny in its own right. Uh, I'll open up to what were, what did each of the, there are two characters in this personal story. What did each of them want? Just unmute your mic and, and you have a sense of what did I want? Did you have a sense of what are the emotions? What are the things that I wanted? Well, you're frustrated and judgmental and really wanted it to uh, be right uh, before moving on. That'd be nice, yes. Other ideas about what I want and what I the other think character more than, wants? I think more than anything, you wanted somebody that recognized your expertise and they and showed you respect by being on time and being present in whatever it was that you were going to teach them i i i did i did feel honored that it was more important to be on time than it was to make sure the background was perfect because it's really the joy of being together and sharing uh the way that we tell our stories and learn i yeah, that's that's good. My, yeah, my I know my heart was there. Go ahead. My impression was that you did not want the uh, total appearance to affect your performance. Yes. But I have to laugh at myself. It is funny to me that in the day of these virtual backgrounds, people do like their ears missing and then part like their arm falls off and then it comes back. Isn't that kind of funny that that's happening to us as we move into the digital age? There I'm like so ready for alien craft. There is a fix to that. People don't go to the studying that because Zoom gives you that fix. It says that first you decide the color of your background and then select the virtual thing, which mostly fits in properly. Ashok, that's, that's the subject of a different talk. It's yeah. true though, but a lot of us are learning. And Renee, sometimes if we, uh, yeah, I'm with you. If we get hung up on the, on, on fixing the technical stuff, we don't always get on with the content of the meeting. And that when you meet with someone and you're working together, it's that connection working together that's more important. That's why I thought it was a funny story. A message from Ross McKinnon. He doesn't oh. have a microphone. Your decision is to accept the new normal of the time that we are all facing technological challenges. <laughs> That's exactly <clears throat> the case. All right, so Roger's ready to put up a poll. Poll number one, get ready to answer the poll. The poll question is, what makes a great story? One, your listeners, your listeners captivated. This is like, they're so involved in the story, they lose track of time. It's like watching a movie and they're just captivated in the experience. Two, your listener immediately replies with their story. That means 
you hear about my experience with the talking to someone with the Zoom background where their body disappears and you remember your experience with somebody on Zoom. Your listener mirrors every emotion. Anything you say, you see it on their face. They lean in, all of the above, or all of the above except there's one thing or two things you didn't put in the poll. Now, I'm pretty new at polling, Roger. How do we know when everybody's in the poll? Well, I'll do a countdown. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. I'm going to end polling. All right. And here are the results. <laughs> there are the results. Okay, so for the people who said everything else, but there's more, unmute your microphone and tell me the... Uh, what else is missing? There, what else lets you know that it's a good story? There's six people who chose that option. All right, speak up. Um, I can go first. Uh, yes. I feel like the one of the greatest part of a story is being able to connect and feel it. It's almost as if you are that person who is experiencing it. I, I think that I, to me is a good one. Your story is good when you notice the other person looks like they're feeling your story. Yes. Yes. Who not, okay. not only feels it, but can empathize with it in some sense. All right. Experience it more than just simply enjoying it. Yeah. All right. What's the next one? There were six. This. What are the other five? Yep. Go ahead. David, unmute your microphone and speak. Yeah, when and, and I guess this is along the line of feeling the emotion, but it's it's even over above that. It's when it changes the mood of the room, when it when it impacts everybody to a level where um, you've really, you know, you've really kind of uh, affected everyone. And it's 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 not about each each uh, each uh, individual's feeling. It's about wow, that's a that's something collective right there. And it's a happy feeling. Yeah, and a feeling of understanding and uh, communion almost. Yes, communion. I remember when I wasn't a storyteller and then I started captivating the room and I could look around and notice everybody's attention was on me, but it wasn't on me, it was on the thing we were sharing. And that feeling of release to lean into it because it's so much fun when you get it. That's beautiful. Okay, there are a couple of other answers that may be the same or different. Who else had a, yep, go ahead, Nancy. Um, they retell the story. They remember it and they retell it. Oh, when you hear someone tell your story that you've told. Yes, fantastic. Also, well, they, if, they're, if they're interested in your story, they'll remember more what you're saying. Absolutely. All right, are you ready for story number two? Because you have the same exercise. We're gonna do the same thing. Listen to see if you notice the turning point. So a, a desire with emotion leads to decision and an action. That's, and then with the W's. Who is it, when was it, where was it? And the emotions, what are, what are people feeling. So a progressive complication in story is when you're in one story and then something happens that you didn't expect and there's a bit of a twist to it. And that's what my story number two is. So I'm in this conversation with the client. We're about half an hour in, it's the Zoom meeting. We're kind of rolling along, it's going great. And suddenly, and this is more of these technical challenges, suddenly he's poof gone, disconnected. And I'm recording the meeting. And I think about, you know, something weird happened. I'm sure he'll be right back. I'll just keep the recording on. And then I sit for a minute and I think, oh, maybe it's me. I don't know what you would do, but what I did is I minimized the screen and then I went to check my connection and my connection was good. 
And I thought, okay, he'll be right back. And then here's where this, I, I don't know. I, I think humans run sort of on autopilot. And I feel like in this new Zoom era, uh, my autopilot isn't yet set just right because here I am sitting and I back in full screen and I see only myself and I'm waiting for him. And then I, I'm just looking and I went, wait a minute. I could really use some lip gloss. So I like put lip gloss on and then I start fluffing my hair. And then I realized, wait a minute, I'm not looking in the mirror. I'm recording this thing. He's going to come back. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> am I going to keep, it's a recording that then I share with my clients. Am I going to open editing software and delete that? And did I do anything like pick my nose that I wasn't paying attention to? <laughs> And when he came back, I, I told him what I had done and how embarrassing it was. And he says to me, what happened is he's got a new puppy. And the, earlier in the day, they'd been playing together. And he hadn't realized that while they were wrestling the puppy or whatever, they had disconnected the power cord. So he'd lost power. And, and now he was back. Okay, so that's another personal story. Just a short personal story, something that happens in everyday life. I'm going to, again, have Roger help me put us into breakout rooms, three people to a room, and discuss what was the turning point, a desire with emotion that leads to decision and action. Who were the characters? When did it happen? Where did it happen? And what were the emotions? So Roger, if you'll click us into rooms for 90 seconds and then we'll come on back for story number three. And um, while we're waiting, Dakota has asked a question. Okay. Uh, it's about how we know people are engaged and his answer is the person asks for more details or information because they want to know more and are captivated. Oh, absolutely. And that helps too on retail. If people are asking you questions and you realize that your story is leaving out some important details, the next time you tell the story, you might include those things. That's what's great about practice with telling your stories. Thank you, Dakota. We now have 30 of 34 back. I would continue if I were you. All right, so we know who the characters were because it's the same characters as before. What are the emotions that you felt in that story? And I just unmute your mic and, and go ahead and, and shout out or I'll call some names. For, for a moment you felt abundant that did, did he leave me and go or was there something else? And for a fraction of a second, maybe for half a minute, you must have felt that he has really gone. So you went about doing your lipstick and everything. <laughs> then you realize that you are on the camera. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Other emotions that you felt? Um, you mm -hmm. might felt uncertainty or confusion. That yes. what did suddenly happen. And she got disconnected. I mean, your clan got disconnected. And that's, I, I'll ask you as a group if that's pretty common. I mean, we get in these meetings and then someone leaves and it's like, oh my God, is it their internet or is it my internet or what happened? That's a pretty, yeah. from in my life experience is that's getting to be the new normal. Like you don't get freaked out about it like you used to. You just kind of go yes. through go through a checklist. It's just one of the things that probably isn't on your checklist is, oh, since I'm alone, I'll just check my makeup. Where did uh, that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You would have um, also felt, you possibly could have felt frustration because you didn't know what had happened. Um, yes. You disappeared and you chose to wait first. 30 seconds goes by, he's not back. And you're checking everything on your end and it's all good on your end. So you might've been a little frustrated not knowing exactly why he's disappeared. Absolutely. And that can be scary when it's someone you don't know. If you're pretty new in the relationship, then you're kind of worried of, oh, oh, could this be a, a problem in your business relationship? 
But if it's someone you've been working with for a while, there's that trust. Oh, we know we'll work it out and he'll be back. And that's kind of the zone that I was in. Fantastic. Uh, we still know who, we know when, we know where. We've kind of talked a little bit about the emotions. Roger, if you could help me out, let's put up our second poll. Because this is what I don't know. I came today armed with three personal stories. You've heard two of them. And here's our poll. Engagement is, how personal did this feel? Was it kind of fun? So here's your question. One to five is like, eh, that story doesn't do anything for me. Six to eight is, man, I could see myself in that story. I've had those kind of feelings. Nine or 10 is, that story reminds me of my own story. Totally. And the other option here is, not only does that remind me of a story, but I'll tell you my story in one to two minutes or three minutes. And I'm looking for somebody to say, whoa, that story reminds me of my story. I've got one, yay. And can everyone see the polling scores or am I the only one that's seeing that, Roger? I'm going to do the countdown now to end polling. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. Mm-hmm. And polling, share results. I'm liking it. So I'd like one of the two people with a similar short story to take a minute or two and tell their story. No pressure. <laughs> so I'm open to somebody who had a story where they went, that reminds me of my story. And it's short, but you could share it. That's like um, happened for me before, like um, it's similar that like somebody, like when I'm texting somebody and even if I know them, like sometimes I feel like if they don't get back to me as quickly as they're supposed to do, I'm like, okay, like what's happening? Why they are not like uh, responding? And then like it happened for me that like after a while, they're texting me back that like mm -hmm. that's, that's why we like I couldn't text you back. I was like, okay, I was judging them in my head. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like a whole... take it personally, right? That like yeah, you do take they don't it like personally. Me or like why? Why they are not doing it? like they are not responding? Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Thank you for sharing. Yes, and uh, and it's like we weren't in the digital age, and then COVID happened, and suddenly people that weren't really part of it became part of it and they're like on their own learning curve. And so we're all finding a new patience with what that looks like. Yeah, good, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Now, uh, did I have one more? I'm gonna move forward. Well, this, this happened with me, but not in a digital way, but it happened in a meeting where one to many people were sitting in front of me and I was talking to them and one person suddenly got up and went out of the room. So a lot of emotions were going through my mind that it, it, did I bore that person that he is not interested anymore and he left or was there something urgent come up to him? He remembered something and he left. So a lot of emotions in that split second were going through my mind. What exactly is happening? But then it was not allowing me to concentrate on the job on my hand. So I just moved that this thing and concentrated on my job. Yes. And, and so, yeah, those are things we bring from our life before we were all digital, but it stays with us. And then we kind of recalibrate. Now I'm going to add a fourth thing. You've heard two personal stories. I'm going to give you a third personal story from just the past two days. And I'm going to ask you to add one more thing to what you're evaluating. And it's what's called dialogue. When people say their actual words, and I put this picture up, there's what they say, and then there's in their mind how they're thinking and what they're feeling. Because people don't always say what they really mean. There's, there's hidden meaning in, inside the words. And I want you to listen for that as you listen to story number three. 
I'm working with a young woman. She's a grade 10 student. Her name is Sherry Zhu. And Sherry has put together a signature talk about how to save wild animals. And she was supposed to give it at Get Inspired Talks in May 23rd, but of course that got moved to November. But then this person we got connected to has an outdoor summit. And instead of her having a 15 minute talk, she could get a one hour block in this summit. And she, this was an interview opportunity. So the interview was set up for one o'clock on Monday and I met with Sherry at 1030 and Sherry had a list of questions because I told her put bullet points together what we want to talk about. So we meet up again on Zoom. And I, and I said, uh, Sherry, Brady is going to ask you a question. Why do you want to do this? Do you have your answer? And she said, well, I've always cared about animals and we, we worry about the, she just kind of, and I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. You and I have worked together a lot. I want you to think about interview. And she said, you know, I'm not very worried. I'm not very nervous about it. It's just an interview. Sherry, you know how you get into private school? An interview. You know how you get into important clubs? An interview. You know how you get a great job? An interview. And she goes, whoa. I hadn't thought of it like that. You're making me kind of nervous. I said, okay, now let's think about that first question. Why are you here? And again, she kind of went in that, well, then, but and I said, wait, 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 we've done all this work together. You know how to do this. Lead with story. And Sherry, you know the right story. Because every time you've given your talk, people give feedback. It's the story. So we meet up with Brady at one o'clock and predictably he's kind of, you know, you're kind of young, but we might be interested just for the novelty of it. Why would you want to talk at an outdoor summit? And Sherry says, you know, when I was about 10 years old, I went to a zoo and I've never been back. I would never go to a zoo. I saw this lion and it's like his eyes were glassed over and completely dead. And I read up on it and animals in zoos, they get something called zoocosis. It's not good for their mental health. It's not good for their spirit. And I want to change that. I believe in sanctuaries. I know how to take care of animals. I figured out how to do live streaming with video views to get sponsors and attract advertisers. I know a way to save animals and I'm passionate about it. And this guy who showed up kind of like, oh, I'm here to interview a kid, leaned in, completely engaged. And that whole conversation went up, up, up. It was a very exciting day. All right, so that's my story number three. Roger, if you'll help organize the breakout rooms, you're going to into groups of three. It's the same stuff. It's the what's the turning point? Who are the characters? What are the emotions? And the dialogue, the actual words, what's in the meaning of the actual? Uh, where um, my other uh, breakout person was. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you're back now. I want to speak to the dialogue. When she said, oh, it's just an interview, I'm not worried. What's the message in that? What's she, what's she thinking? Um, I think she's, uh, she feels that she's confident with the interview that it's not important as long as you're being who you are and who uh, yourself. But uh, after you have conveyed the importance of mm -hmm how how you should truly communicate in order to succeed uh, it clicked into her and it tapped into the sense that uh she explained why she wants uh, to do what she does a hidden seed attachments to it and that message uh becomes conveyed and 
a person can be able to empathize that at that point. Yes. Now, one of the amazing things is that in so few words, gee, I'm not worried, it's just an interview. Gee, I'm not worried, it's just an interview. Like in nine words, we understand her point of view and her being naive about the importance of an interview. So there's just in a handful of words, we get a deeper understanding of this person. When you craft your personal stories, if you use the actual words that people say, you bring that depth to your stories. The other point I want to make with that story is the importance of using story to connect heart to heart. Personal stories as a lead are something different that people don't always do. Once you learn to do it, it'll open doors for you. And if you like that, the Business Storytelling Masterclass is a great um, adventure for learning to craft your stories and use your stories. And now we have come to the moment I've been waiting for. We have a guest speaker who has crafted a personal story for us. I'd like you to listen the same way you've been listening. What's the turning point? Who are the characters? What are the emotions? What are the what's the actual dialogue? And then I'll come back and work with you on how do you take a personal story and tie it to a business message? And with that introduction, help me welcome our guest personal story speaker this evening, Nancy Lee. Hi, everyone. Maybe you've experienced something like my life this past week. Because of COVID-19, our lives have changed. Disruption is common. And because of COVID-19, I faced two decisions. The first was easy. The second, not so much. I wonder what you would do. It's three months into social distancing. And like many of us, I'm working from home. And it's not just me. My partner, Chris, is also working from home. He's seated a socially distant six feet to my left. And we each have these giant headphones on in meetings. I've just gotten off a great Zoom call with an entrepreneur looking to get life and health insurance for herself and her partner. He's still on a conference call with his team. And his young kids have been with us, homeschooling in their own school meetings. They have just left to spend the week with their mom. And like many of us in COVID times, we've been eating, cooking, and eating well at home. I'm feeling the Zoom fatigue, worn out from the week, stiff from sitting at my desk, too sedentary, too coked up, and lonely. I want some normal, intimate conversation that doesn't involve kids or work. And I want to feel like lovers, not just like housemates or workmates. And I want to lose some of this eating well weight. And I want to get fit. Years ago, I went to school to be a dietitian and I've run marathons. I know that I can do better. We can do better. I want to be better and live healthier. So please tell me that I'm not the only one. Does this resonate with any of you? We're living and working at home. Our relationships are changing with loved ones and our routines around exercise and food. So it's 4 p.m. last Friday. Chris leans over and he mouths to me, wanna go for a walk? This was an easy decision for me. Yes, I wanna do this. I do a quick mental calculation, my work, my commitments, my deadlines. Yes, I can squeeze it in, I need air. Yes, I shout as I jump out of my chair, making sure he can hear me over his noise canceling earphones. Three minutes later, it's go time. I've got my Lululemon pants on, my step counter ready to go. The sun's out, he's got his shoes on, I'm reaching for the door. Because of COVID, the golf course across the street is closed. And it's about to become our giant green love park, just for us, our time together. Chris says, wait, one more thing. He bolts to the fridge and emerges with this huge grin. He's got something in his hand as we get into the elevator. I say, what is this? It's an apple strudel in my face. 
and my thoughts are racing. I'm committed to being fit. And I'm thinking, are you helping or hindering me here? Three days prior, we went grocery shopping and this man knows that I love apple strudel. And he asks, which strudel do you want? Not strudel or no strudel, but which strudel? I pick the apple. I want exercise and I want health. I want connection. I'm not thinking about strudel calories. I'm expecting maybe water or fruit or maybe an energy bar. And in that moment, I was so flabbergasted, I actually took a picture. Him offering me the strudel. This man loves me so much, he believes that he's goal stacking for me. Number one, a walk for exercise. Number two, with someone you love, me. And three, to bring along a motivational snack, the nostalgic apple strudel. It's a win, win, win. Exercise, loving connection, and apple strudel too. What a thoughtful and perplexing man I love. This was the hard decision. I wanted to acknowledge his thoughtfulness. I do love strudel. And I want to feel normal, healthy, and fit. What would you do? Would you eat the strudel or not eat the strudel? To strudel or to not food. to strudel, that is the question. To strudel do... <laughs> or not to strudel. <laughs> Can we do half the strudel? Would that be an option, a, a fair compromise? Really? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'd eat it all, I'd have half a bottle of wine, I'd run laps. In truth, I would eat mine and his, but you know. <laughs> That's just me. All right, so I'm not going to break out rooms. She had two turning points. Nancy had two turning points in her story. She and I talked about this story together. The first one is, here I am, and these are the emotions. I'm exhausted. We've had the stepkids. We've been overeating. We're working. We're in the same room. We're to, you know, I, I want connection. And then he leans over and says, let's take a walk. Now, for a lot of people, it'd be, you know what? You take a, a walk and I'll take a nap. That would be a decision point. Do I take the walk or not take the walk? The thing about this woman is she's a yoga person. She runs marathons. She's a fitness person. To her, this was a no-brainer. So this isn't the turning point that you zoom in on for a personal story. It was an option, but it doesn't fit her personality. The next one is standing at the door, ready to go, then getting in the elevator. And this person who you love, who you want to be connected with, is giving you comfort food that's not at all a fit to fitness and all the feelings. So that was the turning point that she leaned into for the story. And the reason it's a conflict is I want connection. Here's someone who loves me, is trying to do a good thing. If I turn it down, will I lose some of that good intentions? Because I want that love and connection. But if I have it, am I going against my goals and ambitions for myself? Turning points make for great, great stories. Now I see that I've used a pretty good chunk of time, but I want to talk to you about when you have a story, a personal story, how do you then turn it to a business message? Imagine this was your story. In this story, she, she opened with what we call a hook, something that um, gets the audience thinking this is a story about them. So she starts with the hook. The hook is we're all in COVID times and times are changing. Relationships with family, relationships with ourself, how we view ourselves, relationships with food. They're different because we've been home. COVID's changed it. That was the hook. Then she gave a story. And now at the end of the story, you can say, I told you this story for a reason. I don't want to send you to breakout rooms, but I would like you to think about your business 
and her business, which is wealth management. How many takeaway points can you think of for this one story? I've got a few. One of them is our relationship with ourself. Another one could be how do we negotiate relationships with people we love in times of change? What other ideas do you have where this story could be used for a takeaway message? Unmute and... Every time, it should not be always what is in it for me. Sometimes you have to say, if I accept this story, mm -hmm. the other person is going to feel happy. Sometimes you give somebody to feel happy. Yes. Same now, thing Dakota, just... Direction. Sometimes you. you have to give in to make that other person feel happy. Don't yes. always see what is my profit in that. And Dakota just wrote in with the chat and he said, um, when do you consider yourself more important and when do you consider someone else more important? So that kind of the shift in the balance in relationships. Great, any other ideas? It could be a talk about, you think, work-life balance. And I'm listening for other ideas. Well, what I would say is that uh, if you accept that uh, gift uh, from her, uh, her dearly beloved, then th that would uh, indicate uh, to him that she appreciated his gift. But then uh, you're compromising your own situation. So when you're going to go for that walk, now that walk's going to be a lot serious. Maybe that's going to be a lot more brisker to make up for that dessert. <laughs> oh, so you're saying the relationship's so important, you would eat the strudel, but then you would work out harder during the workout. Yeah. So decisions that you make. So how do you accept the compromise, but still have it be a win-win? That could be a business message. Can you tie it to other business messages? Other ideas. I've had, I've had a little bit more time to think about it. When I get into personal story, I think about metaphor. Now she's in wealth management. And here's one metaphor. If being fit and healthy is like being financially smart, making good decisions about retirement and savings and health plans and where your spending goes. If, if health and fitness is like healthy wealth management, what, is the, what does the strudel, the apple strudel represent? Temptation to spend recklessly. Yes and buy bright, shiny things or things that are nostalgic, that feel good. And if you know the story of Adam and Eve, I think there's some hidden message in there about the apple strudel being apple. Remember in that story, Eve bites the apple and then loses paradise. So I think there's opportunity there to play with that. I, I I would put it in a different way. Okay. If, I, if you are my client and I am a wealth manager, yes. I tell you that at the end of twenty years you will have fifty thousand dollars, or if uh -huh. I tell you that at the end of twenty years you will have opportunity to go on second honeymoon. Ooh. Appeal to more, fifty thousand dollars or second honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that, also. That is the student. But there's also the, the message that the fact is um, she could totally not have the strudel and be very, very fit, or she could have the strudel and perhaps walk more briskly during the walk and still be relatively fit. So we don't have to sacrifice everything. It doesn't always have to be an either or situation. Sometimes we have to find that compromise or that balance, like you were saying earlier, um, mm -hmm. to basically be able to eat our cake and have it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's plan C, okay. cut that strudel in half, half, <laughs> half of it immediately and save the other half uh, on the way back. So therefore, 
spend some money. Metaphor is spend some money, enjoy life right now, and don't go gangbusters because you're still under COVID. But uh, because you know, if you go on vacation, stay vacation, enjoy, but don't enjoy too much. And then after the uh, uh, the COVID is resolved, then go travel. So kind of like half and half, balance. Thank you. Opinion. Thank you. So I'm a story girl. I'm all, all about story. And when I think of the heart of the story, it's the strudel, no strudel. That's the story. The hook is, here's what's going on right now. We have relationships with ourselves, with food, with others that are changing. So that's a hook. You can change out the hook and use a different hook. And you can change out the purpose or the takeaway point. Imagine that Nancy's doing a talk in a business meeting and she opens with, gee, in this new situation, we're in new relationships with ourself, with others, and with our health and with food. And then she tells the story and the story gets a laugh. Then imagine she comes out of the story and says, this is the COVID time we've been home. Look at all the things that have changed. We're rethinking our relationships with ourselves, with our family, with food. Is there one other thing we should be really thinking about? Our relationship with our money. Mm. How are we planning for our future? Some of us have been saving because we're not taking trips and we've adapted and we're not spending gas and we've adapted. Some of us have noticed an increase some of us have suffered from serious change. Wouldn't this be a great time to think deeply about our relationship with money? We're reflecting on so many things at this time in history. This would be a good time. She could use that as the opening and then move into a 20 or 30 minute presentation on her products and services. How cool would that be? So I have uh, takeaway points today was all about personal stories and I'm so thrilled to get to be here. I had some points that I wanted to um, make with you today. First off, I just, I opened with three stories that happened in my life in the past three days. If you learn to notice turning points in your life and funny moments and conversations you have with people, you, your life is full of per personal stories that you can use and craft to be engaging in the break times and in the meetings after the meetings. If you're someone who's kind of introverted and and you feel like you're lacking confidence to step into situations, there's great opportunity to learn to craft and tell your own stories. That's what the business, business storytelling masterclass is all about. So the first takeaway is you've got stories in your life and if you learn to craft and tell them, you can show up feeling confident and ready to engage in what feels like impromptu situations but you've got rehearsed spontaneity because you've got stories and you've practiced telling them. The second point is that those meetings, um, business happens in the off times. People that are really business people know there's the presentation and then there's the break time and the after break time. And that's where the storytelling, the business storytelling masterclass can be so helpful. The class begins next Monday. If it's something you're interested in, I can walk you through what we'll be doing in that class. There are two kinds of stories. We notice stories. It's a five-step storytelling system. We notice stories that we repurpose for business, and we also capture stories from daily life so that we can be interesting and engaging, and we can learn how to use those stories for business purposes. When you notice a story, the next step is to tell the story like you're talking to a person. Then we put it into a, a talk to text program so that you have a draft script. 
once you've got a draft script, there are 20 different strategies for taking it from an idea for a good story into being an engaging story. You saw a few of those things here. Really focus on the emotions, what people want, really bring that out. Zoom in on a turning point. That's where the scene happens. We talked today about using actual words because what people say and the emotions and what they're thinking behind, people communicate that inside story. There are 20 different editing strategies that we teach in the course that help you take your story, make it more fascinating, more engaging. Once you've got it in its final draft, you tell it to your phone, look at your delivery, your facial expressions, your body language, then you're ready to test it on a test audience. And we have peer-to-peer -peer practice. So you tell your stories and you get feedback. If they love your stories, we talked about that today. When someone loves your story, they retell it, they lean in, they come with their own story. When you know your story's working, that's when it's ready to go into business use for presentations or social media or personal conversations. The Storytelling Masterclass, we meet for one hour for six weeks online. It's a value of 1,900. You get the video recordings as well. There are course worksheets. Today, I have a worksheet for the work we've done today. If you put your name and your email address into the chat, I can send you the worksheet for the work that we did today. And if you're crafting your personal stories, you'll have that as a reference. The nice thing about the worksheets, they include activities, references, and you don't have to do a lot of note taking. There's weekly homework to keep you on track so that you create 15 engaging stories during our time together. Peer practice, one-on-one, -on -one, telling stories and hearing stories, giving feedback. There's a private Facebook group, one-on-one -on -one meetings with me to coach you on how to use your stories in your business or in relationships, value of $600. And we close with a storytelling masterclass. So you craft your engaging stories, you practice with peers, and at the end of the class, we have three days where people tell their edited stories. Business people telling business stories. And it's like a comprehensive review of everything that you learned creating your stories. There's a full money back guarantee if you're two sessions in and it's not meeting expectations. Once you've taken the course, you can take the course again at a reduced fee. So it's no, over $12,000 value, but we have it starting on Monday for 999 US. If you will do a video testimonial at the end of the class, then it's 735. And we're putting it at par, 735 Canadian. You can pay a lump sum or you can do in payments. 100% guarantee, um, for satisfaction guarantee. And we're starting on Monday, June 8th. That's the, um, the email address. And Roger, if you'll put that into chat, people can have it if it's something that they'd like to look at. You mean the landing page address? The landing page, let's put that into chat, yep. And if you have um, questions, reach out to me or I can stay and take questions now. If you uh, are giving Renee your uh, email address, please send it to her privately. Oh, okay. And with that, I'm here and I will open the floor and take any questions about personal stories or business stories or confidence and storytelling. And I brought extra stories. I could just tell stories. I've just sent everybody the landing page address. Okay. 
which fully describes the uh, the program. Fantastic. So, Ayelet, what did you think? Did you learn something or get some aha moments that you didn't have before? You can unmute your microphone. Yeah, it's the first time I'm in such a group, and my aha moment was that I realized how much, like from your description, is how much people invest in the story and like how much business people are not, it's not spontaneous. Like they work hard on being engaging and, and interesting and attract customers or, or people. So that's a very important takeaway from, from, from this meeting. Mm -hmm. 